continuing our discussion for the geometry of curves in R3 now we want to see the one of the most important tools in this direction so Frenet Serre formulas now these formulas uh, named after two mathematicians Frenet and Serre so these formulas provide us uh, the derivatives of three mutually orthogonal unit vector fields known as tangent vector field principal normal vector field and binormal vector field so using these derivatives we can extract uh, all of the geometrical information about any given curve in R3 now let's recall that we have three uh, vector fields tangent vector field binormal vector field and normal vector field also known as Frenet Serre frame or TNB frame now so far we have calculated the derivative of only one vector field which is the tangent vector field and using this tangent vector field we were able to extract uh, one important feature of any given curve in R3 which is the curvature of that curve and now um, motivated by this we now want to calculate the derivatives of the rest of the two uh, vector fields as well which is the normal vector field and the binormal vector field and this is uh, our discussion and uh, these derivatives are basically uh, known as the Frenet Serre formulas so this is our main theorem so the derivative of uh, this tangent vector field is equal to kappa n uh, this derivative of uh, n prime is equal to minus kappa t plus tau b and b prime is equal to minus tau n now these formulas are written in this uh, weird way so that we can see the following relation between them so this t prime n prime b prime is equal to 0 kappa n 0 minus kappa and then 0 tau 0 minus tau and 0 multiplied by t n and b now uh, there are two important things here so first of all uh, this these t prime n prime b prime are written in terms of t n and b and we are able to do that because these three vectors okay so t n and b so these are three mutually orthogonal uh, unit vectors at any given curve and uh, so uh, so basically we are kind of uh, uh, running very parallel to our discussion when we use i j k's so any given vector can be written in terms of i j and k in r3 in our for example calculus course now uh, since we have uh, three mutually orthogonal unit vector at each and every point on the curve so at those point we can actually calculate t prime and we can express this t prime in terms of these three mutually orthogonal unit vectors t n and b and similarly we can uh, calculate what is n prime and uh, we should be able to uh, express this n prime in terms of t n and b and the similar is the case for this b prime so these are uh, these are three uh, vectors at the same point of application and at this point we have three t n and b mutually orthogonal unit vectors and that's why we should be able to write down t prime n prime and b prime in terms of these three vectors so that's the first important point the second important point is so these uh, t and t prime n prime b prime so they can be written in terms of this and the feature about this matrix is that uh, it is anti-symmetric so if uh, if i call this matrix a then if i calculate the transpose of this thing then it is going to be equal to minus a so this is basically anti-symmetric matrix okay so um, in general when we uh, talk about other objects in r3 and uh, when we generalize uh, these uh, derivatives for those other vector fields and we have some other way of calculating vector fields for other uh, geometrical shapes in r3 then uh, this is this feature is going to remain the same so we are going to get another anti-symmetric matrix for other geometrical shapes for example for surfaces now uh, let's see how to prove this fact now we know that uh, n is equal to the principal normal vector field uh, was defined as equal to t prime over this curvature and from here we can easily calculate our first derivative which is the derivative of the unit tangent vector field so this is equal to kappa n now recall that uh, from our uh, linear algebra course or calculus course so this is the basic fact about the vectors okay so uh, if we have a frame so frame means uh, at any given point we have three mutually orthogonal uh, unit vectors 
so let's call them e1 e2 and e3 and uh, if there is any vector at that point so let's say this is the vector v then this vector v can be written in as a linear combination of e1 e2 e3 by using the dot product so this v is equal to v dot e1 into e1 v dot e2 into e2 and v dot e3 into e3 and these are basically the coefficients of uh, uh, this e1 e2 e3 and of course this is dot product so it is a number so this is basically how we write down v as a linear combination of e1 e2 and e3 and we are going to use this result because uh, if i want to write down uh, b prime uh, in terms of t n and b we know that uh, if at any given point we have this t n and b and b prime is going to be another uh, vector with the same point of application so it is a kind of uh, the same situation because we have a vector and uh, uh, at the same point we have three mutually orthogonal unit vectors so we should be able to write down this b prime as b prime dot t into t b prime dot n into n plus b prime dot b into b and of course uh, uh, this is basically a vector field and it depends on t and this is just a situation at a particular point let's say p okay and since we can uh, do this uh, the same calculation at each and every point so we are just writing it down in general for vector field that b prime is equal to this expression now if we want to calculate b prime as a combination of t n and b then we should be calculating these coefficients so what is b prime dot p what is b prime dot n and what is b prime dot t now in order to calculate b prime dot b uh, observe that it is a unit uh, vector field so in other words uh, norm of b is equal to 1 and which means that norm of uh, b square is also 1 and this clearly implies that b dot b is equal to 1 and uh, if we differentiate we know how to uh, differentiate the dot product of two vector fields so uh, we get b prime dot b plus b dot b prime so this is going to be equal to zero and this implies that two into b prime dot p is equal to zero since dot product is commutative so this implies that b prime dot b is equal to zero okay so this implies that this coefficient is zero now moving on uh, to the calculation of our next coefficient okay so now let's calculate what is going to be b prime dot t okay now we know that these are mutually orthogonal unit vectors uh, b dot t at each and every point and hence these two vector fields are orthogonal so this implies uh, b dot t is zero so differentiating So differentiating we get the following expression so b dot t prime plus b prime dot t is equal to 0 now uh, we want to calculate b prime dot t so let's take it on one side and this is equal to minus b dot so we also know that t prime is equal to kappa n so this implies this is equal to kappa n and this is going to be equal to minus kappa b dot n and we know that b dot n is going to be equal to 0 so this is going to be equal to minus kappa into 0 which is 0 so this implies that b prime dot t is also 0 okay so b prime dot t is also 0 and b prime dot b is also 0 now what we have uh, achieved so far so this expression is 0 and this expression is 0 so this implies that b prime is equal to b prime dot n multiplied by n or in other words b prime is parallel to n so uh, this is going to be some constant now this b prime dot n has some geometrical information about the curve and it is basically the torsion and we uh, denote it with minus tau and this minus here is for some traditional reasons so this tau is basically the rate of twist in the curve so so far we have seen one geometrical aspect of the curve which is the curvature which is the rate of turning 
and uh, now this another important feature of the curve is about the rate of twist so now in this example we can see that there are two important things about the path so one is the curvature that this path is moving like this so if I just want to describe the curvature then I will just sketch the curve like this but now you can also see that by uh, by following uh, the change in color so for example this red and this blue you can see that there is a kind of twist in this uh, path uh, of the curve as well and this twist is uh, measured mathematically as the torsion now let's calculate the derivative of n now once again using the same result we can say that n prime is equal to n prime dot t into t n prime dot n into n and n prime dot b into b and now in order to calculate n prime we want to calculate these coefficients and uh, so let's uh, let's uh, first calculate what is n prime dot n so we know that uh, it is a unit vector field so the magnitude is 1 or the square of the magnitude is 1 and this implies n dot n is equal to 1 and this implies after differentiating n prime dot n is equal to 0 so this coefficient is 0 following the uh, same kind of computation as we did in the case of b prime now let's calculate what is going to be n prime dot t now to calculate this thing observe that the angle between n and t at each and every point is 0 and hence uh, this dot product is 0 now differentiating so this is going to be equal to n prime dot t plus n dot t prime so is equal to 0 now we also know that so uh, n prime dot t that's what we want to calculate so this is equal to minus n prime and we also know that t prime is equal to kappa n now we can use its definition over here kappa n so this is going to be equal to kappa n so minus kappa n dot n okay and uh, we know that n dot n is equal to 1 so this is going to be equal to minus kappa so n prime dot t is equal to minus kappa okay now moving on to the next coefficient we have calculated that this is equal to minus kappa this is equal to 0 now we want to calculate what is going to be n prime dot b so n prime dot b can be calculating using the fact that n dot b is 0 and differentiating we get n prime dot b plus n dot b prime so this is going to be equal to 0 and we want to calculate n prime dot b so this is equal to minus n dot and we know that b prime is equal to minus tau n so this becomes minus tau n and this minus and minus they will cancel out and we get tau into n dot n so this is equal to tau so n prime dot b is equal to tau so now we know all of the coefficients and hence we have uh, these formulas known as Fresnel serre formulas now in the next we are going to see uh, the use of these Fresnel serre formulas if we want to calculate or extract these geometrical features of curvature and torsion for any given curve and of course we want to choose a unit speed curve because uh, these formula works only for unit speed curve of course uh, there is a version of Fresnel serre formulas for arbitrary speed curves as well but uh, this th this has this condition these formulas these set of formulas has this condition okay now uh, this is a unit speed curve and uh, we can easily calculate uh, the tangent vector field by uh, calculating the derivative of this beta so beta prime s is t of s so this is going to be equal to minus a over c sine s over c and then uh, a over c cosine s over c and then b over c okay and uh, uh, we are going to need t prime as well because we want to calculate the curvature okay now uh, this t prime is going to be equal to of course beta double prime and uh, this is going to be equal to a over c square cosine s over c a over minus a over c square sine s over so this is c and uh, this zero so this that's how we calculate t prime and uh, using the magnitude of uh, t prime we can calculate the curvature and if we want to calculate uh, the magnitude of t prime 
of s then it is going to be equal to so the magnitude of this vector minus a over c square cosine s over c minus a over c square sine s over c and 0 so the magnitude of this vector can be easily calculated since this is 0 and so it is just going to be equal to a over c square and we know that the value of c is square root of a square plus b square so this is going to be equal to a over a square plus b square which is uh, some number greater than 0 now that's how we calculate the curvature now in order to calculate torsion of this curve we want to calculate binormal and then by calculating the derivative of the binormal we'll be able to calculate what is torsion so in order to calculate binormal we want to calculate what is n okay so to calculate n we know that t prime is equal to kappa n and this implies that n is equal to 1 over kappa t prime and uh, so n the normal vector field becomes minus cosine s over c minus sine s over c and 0 so that's normal vector field and if we want to calculate by normal vector field then we should take the cross of t and n and this is going to be equal to u1 u2 u3 and the components of t and n so the components of t are minus a over c sine s over c now let me move these u2 over here so this is going to be equal to minus a over c square sine s over c and this is u3 and uh, u3 is basically b over c and similarly uh, we we write down the co the components of this n over here so this is going to be equal to minus cosine s over c minus sine s over c and zero so when we calculate uh, this cross product then we get the following binormal so this is equal to b over c sine s over c minus b over c cosine s over c and then a over c now uh, we want to calculate the torsion of this uh, unit speed curve so in order to calculate the torsion we know that b prime uh, is equal to minus tau n so we calculate b prime which is equal to b over c square cosine s over c and then b over c square sine s over c and then zero okay now uh, by comparing uh, b prime and n we should be able to find out the value of minus tau and hence we can easily find the value of tau so we we just compare this b prime with n let me write down the value of n again so n is equal to minus cosine s over c minus sine s over c and uh, zero now comparing this and this we say that we can easily find out that tau is going to be equal to b over c square so that's how these Fresnel array formulas use are used in order to find the geometrical properties of any given curve in R3. Now, in this discussion, we have uh, uh, calculated Fresnel array formulas and we have used them in order to extract curvature and torsion of any given curve in R3.